Hey everybody, welcome back to Kirby Triple Deluxe. Last time, we started climbing the Dream Stock here through Floralia to chase Taranza, who has stolen King Dedede. We started with level 1 of Fine Fields, and today, we're just gonna go to Lollipop Land. These Kirby games don't tend to have much story, so it's not gonna be a ton of recap, but it turns out last time did have at least a little bit. So I think something new in this game is you can actually do a little quick fall with, um, with Kirby. As in, if you hit down, if you double tap down on the D-pad while you're falling, you fall faster. Uh, that was not in Return to Line, so that's a new thing. And this all introduces these lollipop tanks, which just shoot things at us from the background. There's a lot of things from the background. That enemy there was a, uh, Nappy? Nappy? Naughty, that's the name. Not Naughty. Uh, all it does is it sleeps, and if you eat it, it will give you the sleep power. That power is completely useless, it just puts you to sleep, it doesn't heal you, it doesn't do anything. So it's basically a complete inconvenience. But it's kinda cute. And we can get an item here from DDD. DDD Waddle D. Get Whip here, Whip's awesome. Whip is probably one of my favorite powers that they introduced in um in Return to Dreamland. Pretty much every power that was introduced in Return to Dreamland did make a return, except for water. For some reason water was dropped, and I don't actually have any idea why they might have dropped water. <laughs> um, I actually, I, I like it personally, so I don't know. Anyway, your power here is wheel. This turns you into wheel. You can't really do that much. If you hold down as you uh, rev up, if you hold down at any point, you can rev up, and that will let you do a little burst, which might be stronger against enemies or whatever, but it's not, like, that strong either way. It's a cool power though. And, um, you can um, turn around... Excuse me. You can turn around constantly like this, and if you do that on an enemy, it'll just constantly damage them and you'll be invulnerable. So, it can be very effective against bosses and the like. But we need it here to get to this 3D warp star fast enough to get through that gate to get that sunstone. Also, we needed to get into this room in general because it allowed us to skip past those Gordos without being harmed. We can just... Rive, right, rive, ride right past them. We don't have to worry about anything. This song's very calming. Oh, okay, hold well on. When you're in this room, you want to turn around immediately to get that rare keychain. Almost missed that one. That's always the most dickish stuff in game design, isn't it? Just putting something right behind the start of the level. Uh, what was the Insomniac? I think was the 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 people who made the original Spyro games, right? Didn't they love doing that? I haven't personally played the Spyro games. I own. I think the third one, but other than that, Spyro is not a series I've played. I also really haven't played Crash Bandicoot. Um, I did go to like a daycare when I was younger. There was like a daycare in one of the stores my parents shopped at. I don't remember what store. Um, but there was a, a daycare and they had like game systems there and stuff. And they had Crash there, so I'd play it there. But that's the only time I, I ever played Crash. Uh, I did have a friend growing up who had a PS2, but he he didn't own Crash. He also refused to get ok let me play Okami on a system either because I was I offered to buy it, but he wouldn't let me play Okami on the system unfortunately. But hey, I played it anyway. The keychain for this level is the Starship from Superstar. Uh, I think it's from Milky Way Wishes. I actually haven't played Superstar in a while, uh, not all the way through at least for some reason. But, that's level 1. So now we go to level 2. <laughs> there's stage, so I guess there's stages, and then... Technically, Lollipop Land is a level of Floralia. Oh, I love this song! It's so happy! And I love this power, it's so awesome! Yeah, Archer is probably my favorite power in the game. Either... either It's either this or Leaf. It's just super strong. If you charge it up, it does a ton of damage. It goes through enemies. And it doesn't take that long to charge up, either. Like, that's pretty quick. You can kind of rapid fire that against bosses. We can aim straight up. We can aim in any direction. Or rather, we can uh, aim our shot pretty uh, leniently. Is that the word? Freely. That's a better word. Uh, we do have a little dash attack there. Kirby's kind of become more and more like Smash Brothers in this game uh, in terms of what attacks he has. But hey, I don't mind that at all. Which is interesting, because Sakurai, uh, who directs the Smash Bros. games now, doesn't even work on Kirby anymore. He stopped working, I think uh, Kirby Air Ride was the last Kirby game he worked on. So it's interesting that even without him there, there's still like a massive influence from what he does anyway. 
And on that note, we have Spear here, which uh, just gives us a spear. We can throw it. We can actually use this power underwater. There's a very limited number of powers we can use underwater. It's uh, Sword, Hammer, and this. And then Ninja, which we'll be seeing at a later time, has one ability related to water. But it isn't uh, exactly usable in water. It just... Well, we'll get to it. Anyway, we need to drop that 8 ton weight. Uh, rather, we need to tilt it above the block there. And then break the weight to get to the sunstone there. I also introduced the underwater physics now. Kirby's underwater physics are actually not that bad. Water elves and Kirby are pretty okay, really. And actually, there aren't that many in Triple Deluxe, thankfully. Um... Which is good, because there's like a whole water world in Return to Dreamland. That was like the most boring one, but hey. They're not bad though. They're, especially when you have some powers like this that you can actually use underwater. It's not like, well, I guess it was going to say like Mario where like you just can't attack underwater. But I guess you have the Fire Flower, you can. And maybe some other powers in the new Mario games, I don't know. I haven't played any of the new Super Mario games in quite a while, so. Anyway, needs a big some bomb max there to get this in the background. That sunstone, rather. And uh, I think we're also coming up to the rare keychain, if I remember correctly. Gotta avoid all these, uh, I think it's some Mimatsas. Kirby enemies are weird. They have weird names. Some of them are really obvious, like there's a Leafin that gives you leaf. But otherwise, it's kind of, um, difficult to remember some of them. Anyway, yeah, it needs Spear to cut that open, or cut that rope, rather. Oh yeah, or you could have used Archer as well. Either Archer or Spear would work, but I personally really like Spear. Uh, Spear is also the weapon of choice for a Bandana Waddle If you're playing as him in Return to Dreamland, or using his amiibo in Robobot, you, uh, you get Spear. So, another Hypernova section. This one is largely focused on puzzle solving, which makes this one of the best Hypernova sections, frankly. So, we need to push that onto the switch there to open that gate constantly. And we need to push these hot furnaces out of the way so we don't get zapped. And they get all sad. Yeah, let's make him happy. Well, sort of. He can have one of them free. <laughs> the rest, too much of a danger. Gotta keep our kids safe. Fortunately, that one's just gonna be sad forever because we can't move that truck now. Let's take all these mamitas. Mamitas. I, I think it's supposed to be a pun on manatee or some sort. I don't know. It's weird. You're fine. You're not gonna. Actually, no, we need you. You need to get over here because we need to melt this ice. And you need to stay there because you're not gonna be a danger. Or you. I guess we need to have all four on it to melt the ice. Oh, okay, that makes some sense. Well, whatever. Just stay there. You can be happy. And get in this door. And, God, this always. We need to. Okay, well, we need to move this one first because we need to crush those blocks. And then we need to move this one over. Use a soft platform to get up. Which are. <laughs> this this all is really creative as well. It's just based off of Legos and it's really fun. This game has a lot of creative um, areas, even if like the the basic world themes might not be so inspired. It's kind of like 3D World, where the basic world themes are pretty uninspired, but when you get down to the actual levels themselves, they are pretty great. So these big missiles are going to be a problem for us, but luckily, or that, rather they would be a problem for us if we didn't hyper over, because we're going to suck them up and also destroy their launchers to get some wonderful bread that for some reason was hidden in machinery. I didn't realize we could power machinery with bread. <laughs> I'm just going to put bread in my CD tray and see how that goes. Won't go well. Won't go well. That doesn't respond well to you know, anything but a toaster. And I guess, like, sandwich ingredients. I don't know. Anyway, uh, there's a keychain under that car there that I do want to get. So, all I have to do, move this car out of the way. And then drop down here and move the hot furnace away. Well, I guess, I guess we'll just move the car over, as you say. That kind of didn't go well, but hey, whatever. It works. And let's head out. And now we got a bit of nostalgia baiting, which I don't mind, because Kirby hasn't done it that much. They kind of only started doing it with the Return to Dreamland, with uh, with a certain boss reappearing in the true arena, and uh, in this game, with a few extra elements, and then Robobot is quite a bit of nostalgia pandering in some parts, especially musically, but... Nope, we just get uh, green greens from the original Kirby's Dreamland. Pretty nice. But, that's that level. Fun hypernova section, I really like that one. 
a lot of puzzle solving, a lot of creative, um, uh, creative just imagery with Hypernova. And I love that little nostalgia thing at the end, admittedly. Even though Dreamland was far from my first Kirby game, but hey, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> just the one. Boxen. It's a good name. It's weird that Amazing Mirror had, like, completely different enemies for some things. <laughs> and there's the Master Sword. Uh, because Amazing Mirror was technically a different world. If I remember right, wasn't Amazing Mirror, um, also in the sky? Like, didn't the, wasn't the Mirror Dimension just way above Dreamland? Since in comparison. Could be near Floralia. Could be in Floralia. Could be Floralia! I don't know. Oh, speaking of Ninja. We were talking about it earlier. There it is! That's just a pretty fun ability. It used to be my favorite ability, but I think that's just because I was a younger child and I thought ninjas were the fucking coolest thing. <laughs> it is a fun ability though. Has some really cool aspects. If you hold if you just uh, mash the B button, you can shoot a lot of daggers pretty quickly. Or shurikens. No, those aren't shurikens, those are daggers. Maybe. This is, I think there's an actual different name for them, but I don't know. I'm not I don't I don't know. <laughs> uh, if you hold B you can do a little sword slash. And if we can demonstrate on this Bronto Bird, yeah, you can do a little, uh, uh, wave after that, I guess. I can't think of a different, this, I think there's a different word for it, but I don't know what it is offhand. And, uh, what else can you do? If you hit, uh, down, up, up and down, <laughs> you can do this little blossom attack. Pretty, pretty. That it's a pretty attack, is what I mean. Uh, you can also do a dash attack, which is interesting, because the hitbox is, like, sort of near the mid of that attack. So if we dash here... But it wouldn't have, like, affected him if we had just started it. it. It's weird. The hitbox is kind of odd, but you get used to it. You can also hang on walls, like I'm accidentally doing right now. But, yeah. If you, if you get hit by the hands, you'd feel ashamed. But, yeah, no. You can just stick to a wall if you hold towards it. I think you can jump off it, too. Yeah, you can just sort of wall jump like that. Pretty fun. Doesn't come up in... Uh, but there isn't, isn't helpful a ton, but it, it can be fun. So now we have this 3D cannon here, 3D helmet cannon, I believe it's called. And we're gonna shoot into the background, kill all our foes, be very rude to that shot so that wildly they deserve to die. We'll, we'll try and not kill the napping guy. Okay, we killed him by accident. Hey, it happens. Sometimes when you're especially when you're wearing a cannon that fires itself on your head, accidents happen. You just kinda gotta accept it. But we need to get the 3D helmet cannon over here because we need to destroy all these durable blocks. To not only reveal a watermelon, two watermelon in fact, but a sunstone. And I love Kirby's face when uh, when he has the sign. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing! I can't get this off! Help someone! It's adorable. Kirby's just, Kirby's just the greatest. That's why he murders everyone in his path. All the greatest people do that. Haven't you played Undertale? So, I don't think there's anything up here, but we can get Archer. Uh, sure, let's go for it. There's also a keychain up here, but I was thinking there might be something more important, but I guess not. Gotta wait for these springy hands to go forward. And just some floating cake? I guess that's cake. It's either cake or like jello or something. That's some weird jello. I actually haven't even showed off Beam yet. Beam is like one of the most basic abilities. Of Kirby, it's like been there since the beginning, I think. But that is time, dying right. We just kind of gotta wait for it to blow up now. But you can use it to destroy these metal blocks here, and that will lead us down the <laughs> down the right path. Yeah, if you duck with uh, Archer, you just get behind a little cover thing, and that makes you invincible. Fun, uh, fun thing though, you can actually shoot from under that cover. You don't shoot incredibly fast, but if you need to do some quick shots while you're safe, you can do that. But when you take this. Um, this time dynamite up that slope, you don't want to break those blocks. To this background where we do want to break the blocks. To get the second stun stun stone, stun stone of the level. Stun stones though, like that's just you throw a rock at someone, like that's it's gonna hurt, it's gonna stun them for a little bit before they like get their senses back as to what just happened. Anyway, bomb from Poppy Brothers Jr. there. Uh, what's interesting though, Poppy Brothers Sr. has been like a staple of the series for a long time. A certain uh, commentator group on the internet even made a song about it. And like, he's not in this game. Poppy Brothers Sr. is missing and we need to find him. Anyway, bomb's pretty fun. You can lay traps like this. You can- Fuck, really? 
One of the best things about bomb is you can just fucking die, I guess. No, you can lay traps. If we still have bomb, I'd show you. You can just drop a bomb right below you. It's pretty fun. You can also just launch bombs and aim bombs. You can do a lot with bombs. But anyway, we needed that key in the third section there to get into this section with a seeker, I believe that's called. And get the last sunset of the level. And you're gonna give us an item. I guess that's cake, I don't know. We're gonna skip it for now. What are you doing in prison? Get out of there, get in my stomach. You know what, we got hit, so I guess I might as well take that now. Sure, thanks, Bandana D. Why are all these enemies just in prison? What happened? What did they do wrong? The Sparky gets to live. Anyway, we have a pair of throw here. I think you're with Dragon's Edge here. Our uh, guarding doesn't completely minimize damage you do, it just, well, it doesn't completely get rid of damage you do, that is done to you, rather, it just minimizes the damage you do, so you don't take nearly as much, you take, like, a sliver of health away, but, you know, it, it can be helpful. It can be very helpful, considering you only have, like, a sliver of health taken away from being attacked, but, anyway, fly above the end door here to get your rare keychain for that level, and that'll be it. Let's see how we do this time. I've done pretty terribly on the goal game so far. I think that's probably a six. Because it wasn't quite up to... Yeah, overall well, two, rather. It wasn't quite up to par of being a seven. But hey, what are you going to do? Got all of our stuff. Got a one-up, at least. That's kind of helpful. A cruiser. <laughs> that looks so ridiculous. Is this a Brano bird with a duck bill? Mike Kirby. Oh, yeah, well, Mike Kirby had the rockin' hair. <laughs> That was dumb. Anyway, now we go to one of my absolute favorite level themes in this game. I really love it. It's the circus level. Although the music starts the same. I, the music uh, in the circus levels is also just one of my favorites. And also introduces us to our final power. Circus Kirby! The weirdest power that we get. Uh, if we hold B, we can blow a balloon up, and we get a number of patterns here. I'm going to try and show off, hopefully, some of the runs. That's the Nightmare Orb uh, from Nightmare in Dreamland, and uh, just Adventure. There's Meta Knight. There's still Meta Knight. There's a flower. Dog. Don't want to show this off for too long. And Magal. I think that's a really rare one, yeah. Magal or from Return to, Dr Return? Return to Dreamland. Other things you can do though, if you hold down, you do like a little, you spin on a ball, if you hold up, you juggle, it's adorable, and if you hold right, you do basically the best one, which is just this uh, fire hop. You can also just uh, tap B, standing still to do like a weird dance thing, it's really weird, but it can be effective against bosses, because you kind of hop in and out of their hitbox, so, it's kind of helpful. Anyway, I love this theme so much. It's mysterious, it's catchy, and it's just amazing. It fits the circus so well. Anyway, these sections are pretty cool. Uh, you go through that gate and you lose your power, so it kind of we have a return to we have a dreamline section rather, where you don't have any powers. And the mirror reveals some things that aren't revealed in the main screen. So we can see that I believe it's a horror tramp there. He's only in the mirror, but not in the foreground until we attack him. Uh, we also have these, uh, what are they called? Aura... Reviews or something? I don't remember. Uh, there's also these fake doors, they're called Fool Rovers. As well. <laughs> Those, uh, ghost enemies. These things right here, that I'm killing now. Uh, they're called Fool Rovers. We also have those fake doors. Did I miss something? Uh, no, I haven't. I don't think I have, at least. Uh, but yeah, now we have, uh, Circus back. So after you exit that section, you finally get your power back. God, I just love this song. Anyway, we have a key D here. I think that's the first time we've seen them. We've had keys before, but never a key D. So we just have to race the key D to the very end of the section because we need his key to unlock a door. So we need to take this 3D warp star here, and then we just kind of got to wait for him. We'll juggle in the meantime. If you, map, if you mash B while you're juggling, you can set them on fire, which can be helpful for some sections if you need to melt ice or something or just generally want flaming bowling pins, you know. Always a nice thing to have in life. I, I appreciate it, at least. But there's our first sunstone. We just need to chase that key D down. 
Kiddies have such a sad life, though. Like, they exist solely... Their, their goal is essentially to keep the key away from you by any means necessary, and that often means killing themselves. It's really depressing when you get down to it. But oh well. So we have a lot of doors here. Uh, this... Excuse you, Horror Tramp. This fourth door here, the second door from the left, rather, is the correct one. We see a sunstone in the background there, but we can't really get to it in any way. So, let's head through this door. But keep that sunstone in mind. And if we head left here, we can see a little hole in the cloth here if we head through. There's our sunstone, as well as a donut, which is a much better reward than the thing we need to finish the game. But we don't really need that one specifically. They give you more than enough uh, sunstones in like relatively plain sight that if you don't, you don't really even have to search for them if you just like sort of care about investigating the level, honestly. But hey. So another truth mirror section here, that's what they're called. We now have these things obscuring the foreground, so we really have to pay attention to the background. It's somewhat best to just play in the background, but later on they will uh, play even more tricks on you and have things in the foreground that you need to care about and in the background. So it's really, uh, really interesting how they did it. There's a keychain there, and we need to go all around here to get to this door to get our last uh, sunstone. We seem to jump through these Gordos here. Gordos are, of course, the invincible enemy of the Kirby series. They cannot be killed in any way. And there's all of our sunstones for that level. Now we just need to escape the circus. Take this chip here. Uh, you can suck up multiple enemies at once, and your star that you shoot will be better. And as well, I think if you have even just two enemies uh, sucked up at one time, it will also penetrate enemies and hit anything behind them as well. So it can be pretty helpful uh, if, you use, if there's multiple enemies, uh, rather multiple, like, anything to suck up against a boss, it can be pretty helpful. So, just as we're leaving the circus here, we want to float all the way up to get our rare keychain for that level. And then just sort of hop our way over to the end, ignore those horror tramps, and there we go. Let's see if we can get a 7 here, or 1 here. Uh, that's like a 5. <laughs> that's really bad. That might just barely be a 6, or 2. But I keep thinking it's fucking backwards. 1 is the highest. It's not that hard to comprehend. Whatever. That's a 2. Pretty lenient. Oh well. A snooze root? <laughs> I haven't played Mass Attack much at all, so... Yeah. Dark Deroach is a very keychain for that level. And with that, we've opened the way to the boss. We just gotta use our sunstones. But of course, before we head to the boss, we have our secret level. So this starts immediately with a good sign. A wall falling on you. Just don't move, or you might die. I, I think you can die in that section, but it's never happened to me, so I don't know. Oh, this these Scarfies. Scarfies are weird. Um, those were specifically Hunter Scarfies. They start in the background, go to the foreground, and they'll chase you. Uh, if you try to suck up a Scarfie, it will turn into a demon and explode <laughs> at you. But uh, otherwise, they're harmless. You just don't bother them. Kind of like bees. Don't bother bees, kids. Wasps are the assholes. This is one of my favorite songs from Return to Dreamland, though. I think it was in the second to last world. It's a really good song. Anyway, we got a wheel section here. Sort of based on the carnival section as well. Carnival. Yeah, okay, carnival. I was thinking. Well, it's more of like a haunted, abandoned carnival, really. A haunted, abandoned carnival. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, 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 there's, not, there's not really a problem with that string of words. Oh, okay, so at the end of the section here, we just want to drive off to get to this chest and get our keychain. Not a rare keychain, but a keychain at least. And we have a spring hand room here. Well, that's a fake door. Yes, it is. A lot of fake doors in these rooms, basically. Just, you know, might as well check it and then just run away as soon as possible if you're not going through, obviously. Just compl it's like completely uh, to your right. What's the word? S swerve, right. If, I mean, that's more like a car turn, but hey, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Probably a lot of people. 
Anyway, we got more falling walls in here. And uh, somewhere in here, there is going to be a key. So it is preferred to have uh, wheels so you can get to it faster. And then all we need to do is take this key over here. And this will lead us back so we can get our uh, keychain for the level. Gonna make some platforms. And then just turn around immediately after getting it. And that's that. Usually the sunstones in these actual levels are pretty much in plain sight. Uh, until like pretty late on into the game where they start having uh, more significant puzzles made for it. Anyway, we got a lollipop tank here. We actually had to use this to progress further in the level because we had to have it blow up some sections here. I don't really need that burger, but I guess we're going to blow up that platform anyway. I'll grab it. Never going to turn down a free burger that's been in the floor for God knows how long. Uh, so I kind of want to get that power because I don't think we've shown it off yet. Uh, this is stone. One new thing to add stone in this game. Actually, I think it was in Return to Dreamland. You can you now do a little punch by holding up and attack. Otherwise, you're basically the same. Just turn to stone. You can do a stronger stone attack by holding down as you transform, but otherwise, mostly saying there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stone transformations. Uh, there's this of the three partners from besides well some of the partners besides Goo from um, Dreamland Three. There's the three playable characters from Return to Dreamland. A fist probably based off Master Hand, and there's a few more I think. There was also the Manly Man we saw earlier, which is a pretty great one. Uh, I think rarely as well you can get the HAL logo, but maybe that's only in other games, honestly. It might not be in this one. They kind of hid all their secrets behind the, uh, the circus power. All we have in here is a rare keychain, not a rare keychain, just a keychain in general. But hey, it's a reward nonetheless. And now we just need to pop back, uh, hop back up here and get through that door. Well, he's giving us an item, so we probably have some sort of fight coming up. These just make a platform for us for some reason. I guess it's a visual spectacle. Uh, I think I'll just keep rock. Why not? We haven't really used rock at all, so... Why not show it off a little bit more against Flame Galboros here? I knew it was coming up. Not because, you know, I totally don't have notes to the side or anything to tell me what's coming up in levels. Rather, secrets in levels. Okay, you're doing a little charge, aren't you, buddy? So, yeah, you only have a lot of offensive options with rock. You can kind of just go in and out of rock form and hope for the best. I mean, you have your little punch, but it's really not that strong. You can slide into enemies like that. Oh, well, I'm in a great situation. Well, we're the Kirby statue right now, by the way. Kind of need to move his ass so I can, you know, do anything. If you go out of rock, you're not, like, immediately invulnerable out of rock. So, you kind of need to be a bit careful. And there we go. Uh, we'll just keep rock. Why not? Let's punch him to death. We don't need flame. One thing I definitely appreciate about this game compared to Return to Dreamland is Return to Dreamland loves giving you mini bosses and then making you use their power afterwards. So if you forgot to suck them up, or if you just didn't know that on your first playthrough, well, too bad, I guess. Luckily, this game doesn't make you do that. But even if it does, one thing I want to say is that Return to Dreamland had a problem of if you let go of your power, and then suck up the boss, but you accidentally suck up your old power, you still get the old power. In this game, it prioritizes the, the item, or the power rather, from the mini boss. So, you don't have to worry about that. You will always get the mini boss power if you sucked that up, which is awesome. And there's a number one, I'm not paying attention, I can get it. <laughs> one up from Meta Knight. It's good old Kirby. It's also good old Kirby. <laughs> Lots of Kirbys. And there we go. That's uh, everything in Lollipop Land done. All we have is the boss. Let's go. Man, Terence is moving fast. He's really running. Uh, the medicine's very good, so we're going to take that. I think we can take Circus into this fight. I don't think I've ever done that, and I want to see how it goes. Also, I just really... I, I'm liking Circus more and more the more I play this game. I find it a really fun... Very unique ability, like, who thought to give him a clown ability? I don't know, but I love it.
There was once a painting said to depict a pair of sisters separated at birth. It slept unnoticed in a painter's studio for countless years before it came to life and vowed revenge on the world. What's interesting is that that other sister in the painting is very likely and almost entirely confirmed to be Drossia from Kirby Canvas Curse. So, we now know that they have a sister. And I think there's also a third sister or something, or a third, like, drawer person that had some importance in Rainbow Curse, but I don't know if they're related uh, substantially all to Paintra and Drossia. But it's cool that they added a little bit of lore to Drossia uh, through Paintra here, just giving her a sister. Also, you know, giving her an origin, even. It's really cool. Trevor Lux and um, Robobot were very, very focused on expanding the lore of the past games, which I very much appreciate them doing. Because Kirby, was, it always had like a lot of questions, but it was always such a lighthearted series at its core that these questions often just went unanswered and also unquestioned in general. Because, eh, it's just Kirby. You know, whatever. There's probably not really a deep answer to them, but Trevor Lux and Robobot aim to challenge that idea, and I really like that about them. Just wanted to give some time to listen to the boss fight music. I praised it so much last time that I think it'd be a crime to not do so. And that's Paintra done. She's gonna launch in from the background at some points like that. She usually does it a lot more, but it kind of finished her off quickly. Circus went really well with that. I guess she just explodes. And we get our sunstone. And with the Dreamstalk rising once again, we gain access to the third floating island, Old Odyssey. So, we'll enter this next time. We defeated Paintra, we cleared Lollipop Land out of all its sunstones and rare keychains, and we'll do the same with Old Odyssey next time. See you guys then.